good morning. I want to visit all 203 of Zurich's tram stations as fast as possible. And this, this is my first tram. And because I study math, I'm also going to tell you how I found this amazing path across all of them using linear programming and colony optimization and a real scientist. But first, back to the tram. Now you may have noticed that the fun part of this video is not going to be the fun tram journey, but rather the fun math. Uh, although a bunch of stuff has happened on the tram and we're going to get to that, don't you worry. But you may have noticed my outfit is a little bit special on my tram journey. And that's because, as you may know, this problem of finding the optimal route between many tram stations or cities in general is called the traveling salesperson problem. Hence my outfit as a traveling salesperson. Okay, so the traditional traveling salesman problem goes as follows. Given a list of cities and distances between each two cities, you need to find the shortest path that visits all cities exactly once. Our traveling salesman problem is actually slightly different in two ways. Firstly, we don't really care about visiting cities exactly once. I'm going to allow visiting cities multiple times. For example, here in this spider leg, you're going to have to visit them twice because you're going to go up and down. And the second key difference is that we actually don't know distances between any two given cities. For example, between this stop here and this stop here, there is no direct tram connection. So what we're going to have to do is find the optimal path between these two stops and then take the distance in minutes between these two stops as the new distance. And interestingly, you can actually prove that the path you find using my technique here by just solving the optimum path between any two actually gives you the optimum result allowing multiple city visits. So we just need to solve a traveling salesman problem. That can't be that hard, right? The traveling salesman problem, originally thought up by this Irish guy and then later kind of solved by these three people, is a famously hard problem in computer science. However, because it's so famous and because it's applications basically everywhere, we've actually become quite good at solving it. In fact, I'm going to present to you my two favorite ways of solving the TSP. Okay, an update. Something went wrong. So I was supposed to take a train from here now. Uh, that already left though. So from now on I'm behind schedule. I just found a path on Google Maps that gets me back onto my timetable. Even though I just had like a 10 minute delay. But the only catch is there's two zero minute connections on that path. Okay, I made the first connection. Oh my god. That was so tight. It was like next to us and then... Someone else held the door for me, otherwise it wouldn't have worked. Yeah. That's great. I'm back on timetable. Okay, so apparently my timetable had a few issues, but I actually had so many problems that they actually kind of cancelled out. So that's good, I guess. But let's get back to my favorite way of solving the TSP. To solve a traveling salesman problem using ant calling optimization, imagine you're an ant. First, pick a random starting point. Now, pick a random city you haven't visited yet. Make it so that you're more likely to visit nearby cities by introducing a distance coefficient to the probability distribution. Repeat this until you've visited all cities. At the end, depending on how long your path was, drop pheromones along your path. If you had a really short path, drop many pheromones, and if you had a really long path, drop not so many pheromones. Next, do this for hundreds of ants at once. In the next generations, the ants will be more likely to follow pheromone trails. Over time, this will mean that short paths get favored. But since the path choice is still random, they will continue to improve. Hence, there is exploration using randomness and learning reinforcement using pheromones. And that's it. You need to play around with finding good distribution of exploration versus enforcement. But it works really well and often converges really quickly to a great solution. And after a while, it's likely to reach the optimal one. If you want to play around with it, I've made this simulation into a website. The link will be in the description. Be aware that it won't work well on phones, though. And with a few tweaks, you can actually make the algorithm work for the tram network as well. And that's what I did. And that's what my computer calculated for many, many nights. And this is the result. This is a path that's nine hours and six minutes long. And so far, it's the fastest path I've ever found. And that's also the path that Traveling Noel is on right now. Speaking of whom, how is he doing? A little update. I made it into the city center. Um, it went smoothly until I got a wrong tram. I realized after two stops that I got into a wrong tram. I unfortunately didn't record it, but um, yeah. So now I'm a tram behind my timetable. But who knows, I might be able to catch it again, like last time. So I'm still hopeful. Oh, look, it's so pretty. Oh my god, look, it's 
the sea. Oh. Okay, so traveling Noel seems to be doing great. Uh, let's hope it stays that way. Spoiler. It won't. Okay, I've promised to show you two ways of solving the TSP, but so far I've only shown you and colony optimization. And that algorithm is very visual, it's very great I think, and very amazing, but unfortunately it's the randomized algorithm that's not really guaranteed to give you any meaningful results. Instead, these three guys here, they came up with a different solution. These people used this really elegant optimization technique from mathematics known as linear programming. And it works like this. You start up with a two-dimensional plane, and now you add linear constraints. So for example, you can draw a line and you define everything below that line to be good. And what that produces is a restriction of the plane. Now we add an optimizing direction. And now the goal is to find the point within the feasible region that produces the maximum objective value, meaning that it goes as far as possible into the maximizing direction. In our case, the point is this one here, because at this point you can't go in any other direction to increase the maximum value. So we can formalize what we just did by writing it in equation form. And just as a note, you may realize that in this example, my linear program only has two variables, so we can actually draw it in a plane in two dimensions. If we increase the amount of variables to say 100 variables, then drawing it might not make a lot of sense because then it would be 100 dimensional and it's really, really hard to imagine 100 dimensional space. But this is just an example of a very simple linear program. If we actually translate real world problems into this, they tend to get a lot more complicated. To actually solve these, what we can do is we can convert all of these inequalities into equalities using stack variables and then we jump around corners. And basically what we do is we jump around from corner to corner into more and more optimal solutions. And this is very, very broadly speaking the syntax algorithm. So all we need to know is that there is a way to solve these, which isn't that hard. And by the way, for the complexity nerds out there, uh, I see you. Linear programming turns out to be solvable in polynomial time, meaning that linear programming is in P, meaning that all problems that can be expressed as linear programs are also in polynomial time solvable, and thus in P. And if you know what that means, you should probably go outside more often. It turns out you can actually express the TSP as a linear program, and that's exactly what these three guys did. But you need to cheat a little bit. Let me explain. First, consider a graph. This graph is now a representation of our tram map. So each one of these nodes represents, say, a tram station, and each one of these edges represents a connection. Now, for each edge, for each connection, we know how long it takes. So let's write those times on the edges. And just for fun, let's assign a variable to each edge. Every variable represents if we take the edge or not. If a variable is zero, then that indicates that we don't take that connection. And if it is one, that indicates that we do take the connection. For example, if x1 is 1, then we take this connection and that's included in our optimum path. Now the cost of a path, so like the length of a path, can be expressed as the following function. And to actually ensure that the variables make sense so that they actually form a path that makes sense, um, we can have the following constraint. So for every edge, so for example for this edge, we know that the sum of x3 plus x9 plus x7 plus x6 must be exactly 2 because there must be one incoming edge that is active and one outgoing edge since we need to reach that stop and then need to leave that stop again at some point. In other words, we know that the sum of x6 plus x7 plus x9 plus x3 is equal to 2. And we do this for every stop. And now we also want to avoid cycles, for example, a situation where these three cities are connected, but aren't connected to any other cities. So how we do that is using an additional constraint that for every subset of cities, so for every group of cities that isn't all cities, we say that the total number of active connections that we take within this subset must be equal to the number of cities in that subset minus one. So for example, x8 plus x9 plus x7 must be two because with two, you can't form a cycle. And if we do that for every subset, then no cycles can exist. And of course, we don't actually want to maximize this, but we actually want to minimize the function. And that's it. Now the solution to this linear program is exactly the traveling salesman problem. Amazing. Um, however, there's a catch with this. So I kind of just glossed over the fact that these variables must either be zero or one. So we actually need more constraints. We need to say that x1 is either 0 or x1 
is zero. And as you may notice, that's not a linear constraint. We can't say that in a linear function. So we need to cheat a little bit and say that all variables must be integers, so whole numbers. However, there's still smart people who figured out some good algorithms to solve this, even with whole number solutions. They are a bit slower, but they still work. So that's good. Woohoo! So just to recap, we can actually formulate our problem of finding the optimal route within these tram stops as a traveling salesman problem, which we can solve using and calling optimization or linear programming. So that's good. How is traveling Noel doing? This is a live map of the scheduled time and where Traveling Noel is using GPS data I recorded. As you can see, the mistake I made here really caused me to lag behind schedule a lot. And as time goes on, the distance between Traveling Noel and the planned time got larger and larger. back to the traveling salesman problem for a moment. So we now solve the traveling salesman problem, but unfortunately it turns out our timetable problem is actually not a classical traveling salesman problem. Instead, our connections are in constant length because of t tram timetables. So what we actually want to solve is something called the time-dependent traveling salesman problem. And unfortunately, solving the time-dependent traveling salesman problem is really, really, really hard. The best way I found was using my ant calling optimization, but with timetables, which actually worked amazingly well, and which is how I found the current path. But the proper way to do it, at least according to literature, um, is using integer linear programming again. And unfortunately, I'm really not an expert on that. So naturally, I asked an expert to help me, and surprisingly, he answered. This is Christoph Hansknecht, a math scientist from Brunswick in Germany, and he's the author of quite a few papers on the TDTSP. It's genuinely one of my favorite things in life, that you can just random email people, and there is a big chance that they will actually help you. Anyway, so uh, we talked a bit, and I sent him actually my real tram data, and he worked on it a bit, and he managed to prove optimality, so he found like an an optimal path and prove that it's actually the optimum for the traditional TSP problem within my graph, which is awesome. So I implemented his optimal path and put it into my simulation of the real world with time dependency, and it actually got worse results than my ant colon optimization path, which is surprising, I think, but also kind of disappointing. If you think about it a second time, it's actually not that surprising, I think because we made a crazy assumption by assuming that connection times are constant. But that's just not the reality. Sometimes you need to wait like 15 minutes before the next tram comes. And this makes it super hard because sometimes it could be optimal to go in a completely different direction just because at the very end you could come back when timetables fit better. And this is just not reflected in the regular TSP. Also, the real world integration makes it hard a second time over when trams are late or if a human, me, makes mistakes because I have about 50 changes to make and chances are I'm going to fail at least two of them, which I did and I don't think that's a huge surprise. Well, anyways, how is Traveling Noel doing? Okay, I'm now somewhere in the city again. Um, it is getting dark now. As you can see, the timetable, because it was shifted, didn't work out that well. I had to wait a bit for five minutes at some stops, but this is the second to last tram I need to take. So when I enter this, I only need to change trams one more time, and then I'm finished. <sighs> okay, this was it. I visited all 203 tram stops in Zurich by tram. I started at 9.05, right now it's about 18.43, so I took around about 9 hours and 40 minutes, which is a lot more than I planned. I, I think this was good. I think I'm really proud. I made it. I didn't think that was going to work in the end. Like, I, I thought there would be more delays at the end. Um, perfect. Now I just need to get home. Probably by going into this tram yet again. As you can see, factoring in timetable errors, human errors, and all sorts of things is worth it. For example, if a given tram fails one day, then the entire mission falls apart, 
the real world is really messy. But I think finding the optimal tram route is still really fun. I will definitely continue my search on the optimal path. My record so far is 9 hours, 35 minutes, if you want to beat me. Um, my expert guy and me, uh, we're still trying to work on the integer linear programming version of the TDTSP. I think that may work and give us a better timetable. Uh, if that is true, I will definitely try it a second time and that will be a second video. So if you want to see that or if you just really like videos about recreational math and computer science, you're allowed to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Um, you're also allowed to like the video and write a comment. Oh, and if you have any more ideas on how to improve my time, definitely let me know. I would really like to hear those and have a good time. Bye.